Good night. Welcome to Tele Islas to the most relevant and important information of the day. The island continues to be used as a road to transport migrants to Central America. This time, the National Navy intercepted three boats, 19 migrants. In the last hours, in waters of San Andres, units of the Colombian Navy intercepted three boats in which four subjects were illegally transporting 19 Venezuelan irregular migrants bound for Central America. Three Colombians and a Nicaraguan were in charge of transporting the 19 rescued migrants, including four minors between the ages of 2 and 6, and 15 adults between the ages of 19 and 43, without the minimum safety conditions and in violation of maritime regulations. The vessels were detected to the southwest of the island by the Maritime Traffic Control and Surveillance System, which notified Coast Guard units, who immediately arrived at the indicated coordinates to verify the situation. Once the personnel were located, they were taken together with vessels to the back of the Coast Guard Station of San Andres to be evaluated by port and military health officials. The Colombian Navy, through the specific command of San Andres and Old Providence, continued to work in coordination with immigration authorities of the Archipelago Department in order to intensify control and surveillance operations to counteract this phenomenon in the maritime, air, and land area under its responsibility. Senator Laura Fortich's statements regarding the presentation of six bills, among which the archipelago could be benefited. Today we are filing a legislative act for the topic of disability so that there is representation and political participation of people with disabilities in the country of the Republic. Also six bills, one of them of great impact for the islands, which has to do with the property regime of goods of public use ecosystems. Also, the first diving law in Colombia, which would be a very important law for tourism and recreation related to the exercise of diving in San Andres, Old Providence and Santa Catalina, to protect ecosystems and also to protect human life. On the other hand, Senator Lorena Rios talk about a bill that will have the responsibility of creating for the first time public policy guidelines for wildlife. Construction and infrastructure protecting habitats by creating for the first time a national registry to keep track of animals and wildlife that are run over on the roads. The wildlife bill could have a positive impact on the development of the livestock that transit on the San Luis roadway. The six bills were presented by the two senators together with representative to the chamber Elizabeth. Around 12 in the afternoon in the back road sector, a man who apparently had been in prison was shot and killed. After the murder occurred this morning, the authorities issued in the last hours the following statement to the public opinion where they reported, open quotes, at approximately 11.50 a.m. through a report from the automatic dispatch center, information was received about gunshots fired on the lower area of the back road sector. Immediately, the patrol of the National Model of Community Policing by Quadrants moved to that sector to verify the information provided, finding lying on the floor a person who had multiple gunshot wounds and who was immediately transferred to the hospital facilities where despite the procedures performed by the doctors, the person loses his life. The deceased is a 29-year-old man from San Andres who was serving house arrest for the crime of homicide. It should be clarified that the aforementioned person has judicial annotations for the same crime in 2012. Likewise, the inspection of the place of the facts, location of witnesses, and collection of material and physical evidence to seek the clarification of the facts was carried out. Close quotes. In other news, rights are leaders in a letter asked the departmental governor not to include Oswaldo Madariaga in the new shortlist to be director of the Okre again. A group of rights are citizens sends a letter to Governor Hawking asking not to include Dr. Oswaldo Madariaga, current director of the Okre, in the shortlist of the candidate to this office. In response to this, the delay's new team spoke with the RISA leader, Augusto Francis, to know his position. The leader said that it is not only necessary to change the director, but also the entire board of directors. We, we would be uh, just uh, in our interpretation of the letters, uh, just accept that uh, the director not go back again to the, to the 
pools as director of the Ocre Office, but also the directive board of the office. We have to act feedback also and uh, we have a finding mechanism to permit them not to go back again because they know they comply with the decree 2762 from 1991 and the 2171 from 2001. The directive were not comply during 30 years with the, with the duty to preserve and to uh, take care of the institution the rice lake uh, group of people. So what we have to do, and in my conception, we have to ask not only the director of go back, but also the, the direct board. Uh, I understand that some people here that from the uh, Ministerio del Interior, uh, police, migration, they don't represent us at all. No, they no um, they don't have the feelings with us as, as an ethnic group. So we have to find a mechanism for them people not go back and, and maybe make the, 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 the people who want self take the determination and elect, and elect who they want. For its part, the letter said to the departmental governor and sent by supervisor read as follows, and I quote, in addition to the above, the oppressive corruption that has existed continue to exist in that agency and the arrogance of the current director has led us to create a movement run by a grassroots organization registered with the Ministry of the Interior and other activists in order to demand compliance with the rules enacted for the protection of the ancestral people, as well as the rights of the archipelago. In this way, the letter kindly requests that the current director not to be included in the shortlist. President Gustavo Petro appointed this Tuesday a new ICT minister, is Sandra Milena Rutia Perez. Sandra Milena Urrutia is the new minister of the ICT appointed by President Gustavo Pedro. Urrutia has worked in the General Controller Office, the Superintendent of Industry and Commerce, and in private companies such as Movistar. The appointment comes days after the appointment of Merri Gutierrez fell due to several questioning for a possible conflict of interest after she revealed that Gutierrez was a majority shareholder of Programar Television, a firm that currently has a lawsuit against the nation for 55 total million pesos. The new head of the ICT portfolio is a lawyer, has a master's degree in administrative law and specializes in telecommunications law, a sector in which she has more than 18 years of experience. She has also worked in the field of public utilities, surveillance and control and regulation and customer service. The new minister of the ICT arrived as representative of the Partido de la U to the Petro government. This was the only ministry that the new government had yet to appoint. The head of the state is expected to make the official this Tuesday. On the other hand, Senator Lorena Rios talked about a bill that we have the responsibility of creating for the first time public policy guidelines for wildlife. The wildlife bill could have a positive impact on the management of the livestock that transit along the San Luis Roadway. The six bills were presented by two senators together with representative to the chamber, Elizabeth J. Pang. A new vaccination point against COVID-19 was opened in the department where citizens can access to be vaccinated against this virus. With the purpose of improving the vaccination coverage against COVID-19 in the department, the Insular Medical Center located in the Aniro building is advancing a strategy called vaccination without barrier, where our citizens who wish to be immunized voluntarily against the virus may approach the entity and receive the dose of any biological provided in the national vaccination plan. We want to invite the entire community to come to the Island Medical Center. We have already received COVID vaccines to cover the whole community with the purpose of decreasing and reducing serious mortality. You don't have to make an appointment. You don't have to be from the medical center. You can be from Nueva EPS or any other IPS. Here in the vaccination campaign strategy, we talk barriers and we are working extended hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. in case anyone has difficulty to reach here. We can also set aside your appointment here. We will schedule it for you. Or you can schedule your appointment at phone number 512-0034 or 315-882-239. The national government has been emphatic in stating that the virus continues and will be present in the world, an important reason for every citizen of the country to be and complete their vaccination schedules in order to avoid its resurgence in any of the territories. In other
order to ensure proper handling of food in the department, the local government conducted a new training day on sanitary regulations for food and beverages. Personnel from the Food Inspection, Surveillance and Control Program of the Health Secretariat conducted a training session for employees of hotels affiliated to Polterco San Andres section on the current regulations and sanitary concept, highlighting the importance of safety and preventive control of food quality provided to guests in order to avoid diseases caused by the consumption of food in poor condition. En el día de hoy nos reunimos con los hoteles eh, a través de la we met with hoteliers with the support of Cotel to socialize the health requirements to be met by these food establishments in terms of training plan, sanitation plan, and to tell them about the issue of inspection based on risk. The idea is that they understand how to design these plans and that they must comply with them. We must guarantee that tourists who come to our island do not get sick because we would have a bad image of the islands, not of a particular hotel, but of the islands. The health secretariat points out that it is of vital importance that the hotel sector complies with all sanitary measures in the handling and preparation of food in order to avoid cases of food poisoning to visitors that could tarnish the image of the island. That they arrived and got sick because they consumed something that was not prepared in good sanitary conditions. Within those aspects is that food that is prepared must be a safe origin. The water must be of safe origin. The personnel that works must comply with adequate hygienic practices. The training on sanitary regulations that the Health Secretariat is conducting has already offered informative tasks to the fishing sector and establishments that sell and commercialize cold meats so that our sectors of the island conduct a correct preventive control in the quality of the food consumed in the department. And it's time for Sport News with Victor Fusalba. Hello, here are the best sports of the islands, and this time with the Rathman Triathlons, a great national event that took place on the beaches and streets of San Andres. The organizer of the triathlon event, Jan Capitani, describes San Andres as a true paradise. According to the renowned organizer, of international sporting events, the aim is to position the Rastaman here in the archipelago as one of the most important at the international level. Janos Capitanis, Janos Capitanis spoke to us in more details. We bring here 250 triathletes, very happy. This is a paradise for the triathlon. So uh, the race is uh, Rastaman. A uh, half distance uh, triathlon, and we have a lot of plans with this race. We're gonna do like a circuit, and the race is gonna be next year in Curacao, in Panama, and here in San Andres, Providencia, and Santa Catarina. This is gonna be the 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 main place for the for the event. We would love to have people from USA, from Central America, Costa. Costa Rica, Panama, Curaçao, Ecuador, all the American countries, and why not the uh, European people? Remember that San Andres and Protex is a paradise for sports. To massify and internationalize this event in San Andres will be the medium term objective, so stated Capitan. In another scenario, a grand final of veteran softball that provided spectacle and recreation. To a great final star by the Rizals and the Aquarina in the Sabal Veteran Tournament that took place at the Henio Archibald Stadium. A series that went to three games to the line of the Rizals manager that gave good results. The second game was won by the Aquamarine team, those times in the series, which was defined in the third game that led the win and champions of the Veterans Tournament to the Aquamarina team. These were the words of Jose Erazo. It was a surprise to see an unknown team, including myself. We were not concentrated in the first innings. I don't know if sport gives and takes away. Today is a game that I have no words to describe because my team is a top team, a side team, 
In fact, we are undefeated with 15 wins to lose. Now in the final, we just lost the first game, and now we are going all out for the second game. God will. First of all, it is to create ourselves, to play sports, to give sport to the children so that they see us as an example that if we win or lose, we are the same. If we win, we celebrate. If we lose, we celebrate. So for us, the most important thing is to cultivate friendships, to cultivate fans who come to the stage and cheer us on so that the sport continues to move forward. Hey, we also otro, have to integrate a band Yo me siento like raizal, yo soy continental y tengo 45 años de vivir en, en esta hermosa isla. Entonces nosotros somos una sola familia. Los raizal y los continental somos una sola familia. En adición, Aquamarines brought a character to motivate the fans and make a dream come true for this entertaining character. En la idea de traer este personaje... La idea de traer este personaje a San Andrés fue para motivar a los fans a invitar come to the stadium. I also discovered this person in a national tournament that we were in in the city of Moroa Supe. Got to him and the man made a commitment to us and said that his childhood, his dream was to know San Andres. The team of Aquamarine was committed to making the invitation and in fact, we are doing a fact fulfilled. Hello, okay. oh, the show that I do is really to encourage people to the public to fulfill the hearts of the people with joy and to give to the people all that I can. And this will be our sports for tonight. We will see you on another broadcast. We can see you with Lisa. Thank you, Victor. Our sport news, we reach to the NFL broadcast. We see you tomorrow at 1 p.m. with more Teleza's news. Good night.